Hi, I'm Jeanette with Me Time, and this tutorial is for the Family Tree Wall Canvas project from the Family Tree Bella Box released in fall of 2022. The segments of this tutorial are prep work, first hooping, which applies both to the 5x7 and the 8x12 variations, unhooping, additional hoopings, and finishing and other ideas for this project. Let's talk about prep work. The first thing that you want to do with your wall canvas blank is iron it with steam to get all the wrinkles out from the packaging. And then you'll want to add fusible backing to the back of your project. The reason that we want to do this is because you're going to be hooping this multiple times. And although it doesn't stretch very much, side to side and top to bottom, on the bias, when you pull corner to corner, there's a significant amount of stretch in the canvas. And so adding the fusible backing to the back will prevent that stretch from happening as you're multi-hooping this to get that tree. So fusible backing comes with two different sides. There's a shinier side and a matte side, and you'll wanna go ahead and iron it with the shiny side down. So you'll want to cut a piece of fusible backing that fills the entire back of your family tree wall canvas. It's time for the first hooping. Now that you've finished your prep work, let's get started. So we will hoop the sticky back tearaway stabilizer in our hoop and it has two different sides. So one is a very glossy paper side and the other side. So you will hoop this with the papery side up. Next, you are going to take a pair of scissors and you're going to score the paper inside of the embroidery area of the hoop. And you're going to peel the paper from inside of the hoop out to expose the sticky part of the stabilizer. So this is the sticky part of the stabilizer. Then you're going to load your part A embroidery file into your machine and stitch the first step. After stitching machine step one directly onto your stabilizer, you're going to get your wall hanging canvas ready to go. To start to prep your wall canvas, you are going to fold it in half across the width of the fabric and then from the bottom, so the top of the canvas has a wider finish so that it's a casing so that you can hang it later. And then so from the bottom, you're going to measure up exactly an inch and fold the canvas. So I'm gonna measure up one inch. And I'm just going to use this water soluble and to make a small mark, I'm gonna fold it exactly on that line. I'm just finger pressing that, that fold in place so it doesn't leave a crease on my canvas. I'm going to take this and align the fold and the bottom right on these lines. So this process will be exactly the same for the eight by 12 hoop and the five by seven hoop. I have the five by seven hoop here. The only difference is that your line with that center mark will actually stitch the other orientation in your hoop. So it will be this direction in your hoop. Um, and the five by seven is hoop this direction. So after aligning both folds on the line, you're just gonna unfold your wall canvas and smooth it out in the hoop and press it into the sticky part of the stabilizer. After smoothing your wall canvas in your hoop, follow your step-by-step -step instructions to complete the part A file. Let's talk about unhooping. I have an eight by 12 part A stitched in the hoop. We are going to unhoop this. When we unhoop, this is tearaway stabilizer, but we're going to leave it on the back of the project because of all of the small detail stitching 
in the tree trunk, and in the words, the words that say we are and in love. Those words are bean stitch and are a little more delicate. And if you just pull and tear away the stabilizer from the back, it might pull those stitches through to the back. So for unhooping, and this is the same for both projects, you just wanna carefully pull your stitch design out of the hoop and remove the hoop from the project. And then you're gonna turn your project to the back and then gently pull away from the stitching. And you don't wanna pull these registration marks that you stitched. Those will help in your next hoop. And so you are just going to trim the stabilizer from the back of the design. Perfect. Now you're ready to start the second hoop. Let's talk about additional hoopings. I have with me two different wall canvases. This wall canvas was done with the eight by 12 part A file that's completed and registration marks were stitched in red so that you can see them here. And then this wall canvas is the five by seven version. So this is part A, part B, and part C have been stitched. And we're going to go over the method to hoop an additional hoop on these. So I have a five by seven hoop with already the first machine step stitched. And this is registration marks that stitch directly onto the stabilizer. So you're going to take your hoop and turn it to the back of the hoop. And you need thumbtacks. And you're going to try and get this exactly in the corner stitch. So on the front of the hoop, it'll be easier to see where I'm aiming for. You can see that you want to be exactly, let me zoom in and see, right where those two stitches meet in the corner, the hole that's poked in the stabilizer, that's where you want to aim your tack to be. And so, but you're gonna do that from the back of the hoop. So again, I'm on the back of the hoop and I'm just looking and I'm trying to put that tack exactly in that corner stitch. And then you just take a piece of paper tape and just lightly press it on. You're just trying to hold that in place so it doesn't fall out when you turn the hoop. And so you just do that with every registration mark that stitches. Perfect. So you're gonna turn your hoop right side up and you can see that the thumbtacks are pointing up. And then you're going to take, since this is the five by seven version, I'm gonna take my five by seven wall hanging. And let's look at the registration marks on here. There are a lot of registration marks on the five by seven version because you hoop it so many times. But you can see that I have registration marks going in and then this one is hard, it's this line and this line and they come to a point right here. That's the point I'm aiming for. And then you can see this registration mark right here. So I'm going to take my wall canvas and now put it on top of my hoop. And then I'm going to try and get these exactly in that same corner stitch where the thread pulled through. I'm going to line those up underneath on the thumbtacks poking up. Perfect. After you've got that stitch in exactly as close as you can get those marks to be, you're going to want to smooth out your wall canvas to adhere it to the sticky back stabilizer. Then you're going to turn it to the back and remove the tacks. We don't want those in the embroidery machine. and you are ready to go. So for the eight by 12 version, it's gonna stitch the entire rest of the tree. So here's where they are just a little bit different. The five by seven tree, since there are so many different branches 
that stitch, it's gonna do an additional alignment stitch on top of the canvas. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch that stitch right now. Okay. I have stitched the extra alignment stitch for the five by seven branches. So this stitch stitches just when you're doing the branch files at the top and it lets you look at where the new file that you just loaded and hooped is going to interact with what you've already stitched. So you can see right here my alignments and you just want to make sure that it's going to the center of this stitch is meeting the center of that stitch. And once that you are okay with that alignment, then you just stitch the next step that's going to stitch the tree branches and then a registration mark for the next hooping after that. If you've got to this point and you do not like your alignment between this hoop and what you've previously stitched, this is your chance to change that. You can go ahead and unpick this and then realign it again and doing the same process over with the tack marks. So that is our biggest tip on the five by seven tree is with the extra alignment stitch. Another thing though too is with the, when you multi hoop, if your alignment is just a little bit off, like my alignment is right here, you can decide to cover that with a leaf. If you look at the final image, there are leaves covering the entire tree. And so one tiny leaf in this one spot to cover where you might be just a little hair off um, is always a good option. Let's talk about finishing and other ideas for your project. After you have finished all the hoops for your family tree wall canvas, go ahead and remove any of the registration marks that remain, and then you are ready to do the leaves. So you can follow the instructions and the step-by-step -step photos to complete leaves. There are three different kinds of leaves for you to decorate your tree. There are lace leaves, felt leaves, and leaves that you can personalize a name on. And so you can see the final image and all of the leaves and the many varieties that we put on our tree. I just wanted to show you another couple of ideas and that you can try. The first one is changing your colorway of your leaves. This tree has been done in fall colors. It's so beautiful with the different leaves on it. You can see the different colors of the lace leaves and the felt leaves and the larger personalized leaves instead of having names have sayings on it. My other idea goes along with this fall idea and it's with the large personalized leaves. I used some felt and some clear vinyl and I place them at the same time in the instructions that they show you to place your felt. And then I trimmed those leaves. So now I have leaves with a clear vinyl surface and you can use a dry erase marker to write things that you are thankful for. So you can create a whole tree that has blank leaves on it that your family can write on each year and include different things that they are thankful for every year on the tree. And you can add those to your tree. And you can see that they just wipe right off that dry erase vinyl surface. So you could have that be a family tradition of writing things that you're thankful for every year. Another additional idea would be to take some of the lace ornaments from the Cup of Cheer CD and add those to your tree instead of leaves for the winter season. That would be a darling idea. In the spring season, you could also take some of the felt flowers from the spring showers quilt and add those to show the tree blossoming during the springtime. Um, another thought an idea that our testers had while stitching this out is they really wanted to see a tree done in navy blue and silver and that it would be just be a beautiful, beautiful winter tree. So there are a lot of different ideas and different colorways that you can stitch your tree. Thanks for joining me. Make sure to like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any me time machine embroidery videos. Look for our other family tree Bella box tutorials the This Is Us memory tote, and it's good to be home wall decor. Have a great day and be sure to enjoy some well-deserved me time.